In the Pope's library in 1512, formerly clashing civilizations, ancient Greeks and Christianity coexist. The Pope sees the Greeks over here, and then he swivels his eyes round the room and sees Christianity over there. We're looking at pictures painted for the Pope by the Renaissance artist Raphael. The Holy Sacrament, that's the Catholic Church full of blind faith. And the School of Athens, that's the Greek philosophers full of reason. Plato started this school for the mind in the 5th century BC. A thousand years later, a Christian emperor destroyed it. And now, a thousand years after that, Renaissance art magics it back to life again. For David and Goya, Renaissance art is the first glimmering of a change in human consciousness, from faith to reason. And reason releases feeling. It's the form of the art that shows you this, the shapes, the way things are done. A ripple of movement and life runs through a new kind of space, a space created by man. That looming distance is called perspective. In the medieval mindset, God tells us where we stand in his symbolic realm. But now man can put himself in a real space, he can work out for himself where he stands. It's not the technical invention that is important here. It's what perspective stands for. It's man thinking differently about what he is. Goya and David are interested in humanity. How do you picture it? The Renaissance does it with a single face. It's a whole terrain. You don't need supporting actors. You don't need God. Humanity has its own radiating power. That little dot over there behind bulletproof glass with its security system built into a great big box in front of it. So you really get the message not to try and steal it. It's the world's most famous painting, the Mona Lisa in the Louvre in Paris. It's become a spectacle, something to stare at for the sake of staring. On the other hand, there is something in particular we're fascinated by. We stare at the smile on the face of the Mona Lisa. The famous mystery of Leonardo da Vinci's Mona Lisa. Her appeal is not that she's divine, but that she's human. When he painted her in around 1505, he was just painting a woman, not the Madonna. It was a marriage portrait, not a religious icon. An ordinary woman who isn't a saint being made to seem like flesh and blood, but at the same time possessing a mysterious glow, as if there is something saintly about mere flesh and blood.